Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to yet another episode of The Mix. I'm Phil Armijo, your master mixologist, and with me, as always, the resident lifestyle expert, <laughs> the lovely Julie Smith. Hello, everybody. Great to see you guys again. Phil, always great to see you and come hang out. Hey, buddy. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. So we're going to just jump right into it today. Okay. I know there's a lot of things changing in the weather right now, the seasons. Oh, yeah. Favorite times of the year. Of yeah. Course. Uh, we have people that like to go do all kinds of fun stuff, including like apple picking and other ideas. Yeah, all the fun, Give all us some the ideas. fall things. Yeah, what's some fall things. ideas? What's some fall stuff? Um, well, I like to do just kind of the the traditional things that so many people enjoy, like a good pumpkin patch or to go to the apple orchards, go apple picking. Um, just so many fun things like that. Hay rides, corn mazes. Hey. Yeah, hay rides, <laughs> exactly. And I enjoy those things, and my friends do as well as adults. If you have any kids in your life, it's so fun to watch them enjoy that too. Like, like it's just kind of a magical time in its own right. But right. I think one of the most traditionally fall things to do that I love so much is a good bonfire, mm. right? That's just so much fun. It's such a great way to just chill and hang. Fall is such a chill time to me. Like you're hanging out, you're having a good time, but you want to be cozy because it's a little chilly, right? So a bonfire is a great way to do that. Uh, you just, you know, you have that smell of the right. of the fire. You've got that sound of sound the crackling. The crackling yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just a vibe. It's You're a whole roast marshmallows vibe. like we did last week. Yes. Oh my yeah. gosh. And you know, I'm such a fan. I can put away a lot of s'mores and that yeah. drink you made for me totally tasted like a s'more. So I love that stuff. But yeah, a bonfire is just so much fun. So uh, I love to do that and you know I just I love all the fall things and it looks like you've got something that's perfect for the season. I see some peppers here. What have we got? Today we're starting off with the Benarack Scotch because of the flavor profile that it lends itself to us today for our theme. We're okay. going to keep it with that smoky concept going on. Yeah. And we're going to add a little bit of heat to it. We're going to round it all out with some squeeze of lemon juice ah. and we're going to show you guys at home how to make the Thunderbird spicy sour. Question, I know we've talked about this with the bourbons before. So in the wide world of whiskeys, what makes a whiskey a scotch? Okay, so we'll go back to my mathematical reference that we use for bourbon, mm -hmm. right? All scotches are whiskeys, but not all whiskeys are scotches. You have to have been made in Scotland to be considered a scotch. Oh, so if it ain't Scotland, it ain't scotch. Right. Right? Okay. That's right. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, that does make sense, though, because with the flavor profile that you've described, it makes you think of Scotland, you know, with those foggy moors, and you've got the kind of damp earth there. So yeah. it's going to lend itself to that. Right, and this specifically comes from the Speyside region in Scotland, which is on the northeast corner of the island. Um, there's a river that runs through there. There's an aquifer that's actually located underneath the distillery itself. Mm -hmm. They're using that water to make their, their scotch from. So you're actually, okay. you're literally tasting the elements of the earth from, from that area little inside. Earth. Maybe a little scotch. Scotland dirt in there even, you think? Maybe a little dirt little, in there. A little microscopic, can't see it. <laughs> that's right. It's okay. By the way, something different that the Beinriach scotch does they've introduced this new eclectic cask maturation process, which just means that they simply bring barrels from all over the world, France, Italy, uh, Spain, mm -hmm. Jamaica, which oh, actually yeah. we're using the Smoky 10 today, which is actually one of the casks in that one is the Smoky Barrel from a Jamaican rum. Ooh, how cool. I like Jamaican rum. I love the fact that they use this old process, but then they find ways to incorporate flavors from all over the world with those yeah. those barrels, right? So very eclectic. It's kind of like a United Nations of Scotch. Yeah, that's a good way to put <laughs> I it. I like that. Yeah, I like Diverse. it. Diverse. All right, Julie, ready? I Daniel. am. Awesome. So I'm gonna grab one of these jalapenos over here, guys. We're gonna use one to five slices, depending on your level of heat, of course. One. This little baby <laughs> one right here for Julie. Yep, that'll do and it. And I'm gonna make a couple extra for my garnishes. Okay. okay. There's that. I'll move those over the side. So I'm going to stick my jalapeno inside my mixing tin and I'm going to muddle it up. Feel free to add some ice in there if you want to crush some ice into it. Mm -hmm. The goal is to just get those jalapeno juices and those oils released from that little okay. pinch in there. The and flavor. I feel comfortable. I feel safe with <laughs> that little bit you put in there because I do like the flavor of jalapeno. I love it. Um, it's just literally the physical, the sting of it is what gets me. So I think that's going to be perfect because I yeah. should still get a good taste. Absolutely. And then I'm going to add the good stuff, the liquor. Oh, yeah. We have two ounces of the Smoky Tin, which is the one that has the Jamaican rum barrel. Yeah. Cool. How many ounces are we doing? Two ounces. OK. Two ounces on the dot. 
I was gonna say, you did that one <laughs> by the book. <laughs> Okay, Rules. next we're gonna add three-fourths of an ounce of the agave nectar. Sweetening things up a That's bit. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna move this over because I'm gonna need to make some room for your favorite juicer. <laughs> I, I love this thing. This juicer is not only functional, it is decorative. That's right. It just looks cool. I won't be reaming today, guys. Yep. But what I will be doing is using a lemon. I'm gonna cut it in half because we know that half a lemon is approximately an ounce, an ounce and a half of juice. We only need three quarters of an ounce today, though, so I'm not gonna squeeze as hard as I usually do, Julie. Gentle I don't touch. Need all, of it. all right. So we'll need all get that. Up in there. <laughs> I love that thing. Why am I so fascinated with that juicer? <laughs> it's fun, the old school. Cool. Juicer. So I'm gonna move this out of my way over here. And once again, we only need three quarters of an ounce of the lemon juice. I'm gonna add um, a cup of ice on the other side of my shaking tin. And then we're gonna give it a good shake till we get that froth build up, that frosty outside. And you know the rules, get it up there, good high posture. Shake it. Take what your mama gave you. <laughs> give about 10 to 20 seconds, guys, until you start seeing that frost build up on the side. There we go. That feels good right there, Julie. I just don't look as cool doing that as you do. Yeah, practice. I've tried. Then we're gonna use a coupe for this presentation today, which we love. love. They're so pretty. And That's right. you know, I'm all about the presentation too, because, you know. Yeah, I'm just gonna do a little peel from our lemon here. Yeah. Feel free to shake it up a little bit, twist it and break open some of those yummy juices in there. Just mm -hmm. lay it in there. Of course, I'm not gonna use my back today like I normally would, guys, because I don't want Julie getting any of these seeds or anything in her mouth. So oh, the jalapeno, yeah. I'm gonna use yeah. strainer for this, for this purpose. <laughs> Good looking out, thank you for that. Yeah. I love the color of that. It's a cool then looking cocktail. The last little garnish that we're gonna be using here is the other wheel that we cut from our jalapeno. Just stick it through the toothpick like that. It just goes right there on the lip, just like that. And right. then my favorite part, watch you enjoy. All right, thank you, Phil. And you know, as much as I'm about the presentation, I love this little garnish, but I'm gonna hold on to it to make sure that jalapeno doesn't touch my mouth. So I'm really excited about this, like I said, because I tried scotch one time and it didn't go so well, but I'm excited about this because this is different. It is different. We've got a cocktail situation going on here, so right. cheers, everybody. We got a unique blend of flavors in there, guys, that come crashing around in your mouth like a thunderstorm. That's why we call it the Thunderbird Spicy Sour. Okay, that is, that's good. It's good. It's really interesting. It, it is distinctly a different taste, a different palate with scotch completely. And I still do taste that scotch, but because it's not straight and it's mixed, you've got the sweetness from the agave yeah. and that little kick from the jalapeno, which by the way, was the Just perfect enough. amount. Okay, good. I actually like this. Nice. Not gonna lie, I wasn't really sure, but I like this. I would do this again. Well, I'm looking at Phil in my first actual line, but I love a good hayride, going through the corn maze, <laughs> long walks through the corn maze. So what, the beautiful leaves are changing colors. I Cool. We're positive that's not true. Somebody Google bourbons. Thank you so much for joining us here at another episode of The Mix. Remember, if you want to catch our old episodes and do some homework, or you want to watch our future <laughs> episodes, please visit yeah. us at themixga.com. Definitely do that. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe by clicking the link below. Cheers, everybody. Till next time.